let's talk about the histone modifications which are post translational modifications in the n terminal tail of the histone it regulates the chromatin architecture and gene expression without altering the dna sequence so that means they are epigenetic in nature so dna modifications can alter nucleosome architecture and make the dna tightly or loosely wrapped around the core histone octamer so nucleosome as we know are the building block of the chromatin where the core histone octamer is tightly wrapped around with the help of dna and this nature of interaction is electrostatic this interaction is altered when there is a modification in the histones so the histone modification such as acetylation methylation or ubiquity nylation all can change the way histone interacts with the dna here we look into a histone where we can see it is rich in lysine and arginine residues these are basic proteins so histone has histone fold and n terminal tail n terminal tail is a site for active modification so in the n terminal tail there are several residues which can undergo modification one of the extensively modified residue is lysine which can undergo acetylation ubiquity nylation or methylation methylation could be mono di or trimethylation other than lysine there could be arginine which can undergo mono or dimethylation then phosphorylation can occur in residues like serine threonine or tyrosine so all these modifications taken together creates a histone code that can alter the chromatin structure and gene expression module so in this video we would try to look at this in bit more details at this point we should ask who writes these histone modification who reads them and who erases them so first let's talk about acetylation acetylation is really important for the gene expression let's put this into a context here is a transcription factor which try to gain access to the dna promoter but it fails to do so because the dna is tightly packed here comes histone acetyl transferase which is a writer it writes acetylation and as a consequence of acetylation the chromatin now opens it is now loosely wrapped around and the transcription factor gains the access and can perform its job so here we see that the inaccessible state of the chromatin becomes more accessible as a result of acetylation and thereby gene expression is altered so normally the n terminus of the uh, histone has nh3 group which interacts with the phosphate group of the dna there is an electrostatic interaction and this electrostatic interaction is reduced when there is a acetylation because acetyl group is not charged and it is bulky it is kind of repelling the phosphate group so overall the there is an loose interaction between the histone and the dna so before acetylation the dna would be tightly wrapped but as a result of acetylation dna would be loosely wrapped and that creates the difference acetyl transferase complexes are there in the cell for example we can take the name of saga complex pcaf complex or p300 cbp complex all of them are known to modify different type of histone and they have active domains who does this job now histone acetylation is very important for chromatin and gene expression and acetylation can be recognized by specific bromodomain containing protein which protein contain bromodomain many proteins such as transcription factor transcription activators or nucleosome remodelers might have these bromodomains in their in their structure so we know that hats are the writers but who are the erasers the erasers are actually age tags or histone deacetylases which can remove the acetyl mark so overall we had a key concept here the way nucleosome interact with the dna can be changed in space and time with the help of dna modification and these are epigenetic changes now let's talk about histone methylation so histone can be mono di or trimethylated 
and not only histone which can only be methylated dna can also be methylated and each are epigenetic regulation if you want to learn more about histone methylation versus dna methylation video is just right there in the i button so here we look at the uh, portion of the chromatin and methylation can be associated with both heterochromatin or euchromatin it depends on what type of modification and which residue is modified. Histone modifications such as H3K27 methylation, H3K9 dimethylation, these are associated with heterochromatin, whereas other modifications are associated with euchromatin or relatively open chromatin. So it is highly context dependent. So who writes the methyl mark? Histone methyl transferases. Who writes, who erases this mark? these are histone demethylases and who reads this methyl mark these are proteins which has chromo domain that can recognize methylated histones now we talk about phosphorylation phosphorylation is another epigenetic modification which alters the electrostatic interaction between dna and the histone it adds a negatively charged phosphate group to serine threonine or tyrosine residue so obviously it reduces the electrostatic attraction between the phosphate group and the NH3 group of a histone and thereby it would eventually lead to an open chromatin state. So be it methylation, acetylation or phosphorylation. One thing is very clear. The way histone interacts with the DNA is altered due to histone modifications. Now let's talk about how histone modification can alter gene expression. Let's, let's look at the big picture. So, in order to transcribe any gene, a transcription factor has to be recruited into the promoter and then only it can transcribe the gene. But recruitment requires access, be it transcription factor, be it polymerase. If there is no accessibility, there is no transcription. But how this problem is solved? It turns out nucleosome remodeler complex and histone modification can work hand in hand to make chromatin more accessible for these transcription factors or RNA polymerases. And once the promoter is more accessible, then the transcription can happen. So moral of the story is transcription factor can interact with nucleosome remodeler complexes. Many of these nucleosome remodeler complexes can therefore interact with the histone modifiers and histone acetyl transferases can for example put more acetyl mark and as a coordinated effort of these two complexes there is overall accessibility in the promoter region. That lead to recruitment of transcription factor and RNA polymerases that can give rise to gene expression. So now we understand how histone modification is super important for gene expression. If you want to test your knowledge, you can quickly look at the quiz option which is present on the right hand side corner of the video. See you in next video.